this video, we'll be looking at variation uh, in the context of classification and evolution. So there will be two large aspects that we'll look at, which is, uh, first of all, is what type of variation there might be. And then secondly, is what are the different causes of variation? So first of all, let's look at types. So there are different ways to consider different types of variation. So the first thing is uh, we can think about variation between or within the same species. So there are two types there, which are interspecific and intraspecific. Notice the prefix inter and intra. So inter means between, specific means species. So interspecific variation refers to the variation or differences that you will see between different species. Whereas intraspecific variation refers to those differences that you will see within a species. It's quite easy to see interspecific variation examples. So you can think about the differences between a cat and a dog. Right? So you can think about in terms of uh, maybe the physical features, maybe being slightly different, uh, maybe the, the fact that the cats have uh, sharp claws, uh, dogs don't have as sharp as claws, uh, or even in terms of the internal conditions as well might be slightly different. So it's referring to differences between different species. Whereas intraspecific variation within humans, for example, we've got plenty of examples there. Um, so everyone can have different skin color, hair color, or perhaps height, weight, mass, etc. So the, those are some examples of inter and intraspecific variation. Another way to look at different types of variation will be continuous and discontinuous. So this is actually referring to um, usually about how, what sort of data that we're looking at. The concept of continuous variation is the fact that um, the data that you collect can be between any two points. So for example, uh, let's say for length, you can have one centimeter, two centimeter, or 1.12 centimeter. So it can take anywhere within that scale. So another way to say this is that they are usually quantitative. So referring to quantity or uh, numbers. We tend to use line graphs for uh, uh, presenting continuous data because of the numerical nature of it. Whereas continuous is the opposite. Sometimes continuous can also be called a distinct data. So the idea is that there are separate or categoric data. So it's in separate groups and categories. Uh, a lot of them could be qualitative. So it could be about design, uh, deciding on the color of it or the shape of it. Uh, and you can't have a shape or a color in between two. So it's very sp specific and separate to each other. And hence, we tend to represent uh, discontinuous data with bar charts. So these are the different ways to consider different types of variation. Next, we are going to look at two specific causes of different types of variation. Most variation that we see between different organisms is mostly based on two particular things, which is genetics and environment. Sometimes certain variation uh, could be caused only by one of these causes, but also in certain situations, it could be a mixture of the two. So an example of variation in humans, let's say, that is only caused by genetics would be things like uh, genetic disorders, um, like cystic fibrosis or having different blood types. Um, perhaps uh, also uh, your eye color would be determined only by genetics. Something that um, that is caused by the mixture of both would be things like height, weight, uh, your hair length or hair color. All of those things could be a mixture of the two. A skin color is another one. So your genetics will determine your skin color, but whether or not you are exposed to sun often or you get tanned or not, that also has an influence on that. There are very few examples of variation that are only caused by environment, but things like scarring or tattoos or piercings in humans, for example, would be uh, variation only due to the environment. So specifically, we're going to look at the genetic causes of variation, and we're going to look at different things within that uh, that can cause those differences. So when it comes to differences in uh, genes, you can think about alleles, so we can have different versions of the same genes. So you can consider the fact that we can have dominant alleles. So these are referring to alleles that will express their phenotype if present. And we can also have recessive alleles uh, where their phenotype can only be expressed if there's two of them. So that already can uh, uh, give a mixture of different variations, uh, different adaptations within different organisms. Another thing that causes differences in genes would be mutations. So a lot of times that could, this could be um, a random mutation. So it just 
there was a replication error or something like that. Sometimes it could be caused by mutagens or carcinogens as well, uh, things like ionizing radiation, uh, which is an example there. Another one that you would have learned back in chapter 6 is the concept of meiosis, which is a cell division that produces four genetically different gametes, and that's uh, about the sex cells production, so sperm cells and egg cells. So within meiosis, within that division, there could be three specific stages that causes uh, genetic variation. So the first thing that happens in meiosis would be crossing over, where the alleles get swapped over. So this happens in prophase 1, when the chromosomes are actually moving around in the cell and the homologous pairs would go together. Uh, but because there's so many of them, the chromatids can get tangled up, causing a crossing over. So to give you an example, uh, I can have, uh, this is let's say a homologous pairs, and as they're moving around and they pair up, the chromatids swap uh, that get tangled together. So this particular point where they intersect, that is the chiasmata, uh, the location where the alleles can get swapped over. And obviously the allele does get recombined to its uh, chromatid, but then that would mean that the, let's say, the blue chromosome here would carry the allele from the red chromosome and vice versa. So that later on could lead to further differences in their genetics. Another event that also occurs later on is the independent assortment. Now, there are actually two independent assortment events happening at different locations. So the first bit is actually the assortment of the homologous chromosomes, or sometimes also known as the bivalent. So this event happens during metaphase 1, when the homologous chromosomes actually pair up and move to the centre bit uh, of the cell. So let's say we use the red and blue colors to represent two different um, chromosomes from the, from the mom and the dad. In this case, uh, we have all the red chromosomes on one side and the blue chromosomes on the other side. So when they split apart, uh, they get separated like so, if forming two cells on the left hand side would be the cell with two of the red chromosomes and the right hand side, the cell would have blue, two of the blue chromosomes. However, the uh, bivalent pairs could also form a uh, arrangement like this instead. So in this case, when the cell does get separated, uh, this, the two cells that are made actually get one red and one blue chromosome in each part. So already from that division, you can already get some genetic variation there. So that's one independent assortment event. Another thing that happens is the independent assortment of the chromatids, which happens in metaphase 2. Again, it is about the arrangement of chromosomes, but this time, uh, because of crossing over happening in the first place, we've got the uh, different chromosome with the different alleles, then the independent assortment of the chromatids will actually cause a variation there. So in this case, you can see that on the left hand side, this is one possible arrangement of the chromosomes. So in, in metaphase 2, uh, the chromosomes line up in the middle again, and uh, but this time the chromatids actually get separated, the centromere split apart, bringing each of the chromatids to either side of the cell. However, in this uh, cell on the left, you can see that when they do separate, the left hand side would have two chromatids but don't have any crossed over bits, whereas the one on the right would form a cell with two crossed over chromatids. So that is one possible outcome. However, if we look at another scenario, it is also possible for the cell to have this arrangement instead, where each cell that is then subsequently made will carry one chromatid or the chromosome with one crossing over section to it. So depending on which combination you get, you already have four different varieties here. But keep in mind, I'm only showing two chromosomes here. In reality, we've got a lot more, especially in humans, when we started with 46 chromosomes, there will be a lot more possible combinations there. So just within meiosis, we can already see uh, the three major events that could lead to genetic variation. So finally, one more thing that could also uh, cause genetic variation is random fertilization. So the concept is that during sexual reproduction, you are mixing the genes of two individuals, but then in this case, you can have any sperm cell fertilizing any egg cell. So we don't know uh, out of the millions of sperm cells that are released, which one will actually carry the, uh, its alleles to the egg cell. And we don't know what kind of alleles the egg cell might carry as well. It depends entirely on meiosis and it depends on which cells get released at what time. 
So that on its own can create a variety of different genetic variation there as well. So that would explain why, uh, you know, with your siblings, you can, ha you can have very different features compared to your siblings because it, you know, it's just depending on the gametes that fused and made you in the first place may carry very, very different alleles compared to the gametes that made your sibling in the first place. So there you have it. Uh, with the concept of variation, we can consider two specific things is, first of all, what are the different types of variation? So we looked at, we can consider it as inter or intraspecific variation, uh, or we can think about in terms of presentation of it, is it a continuous or discontinuous variation, um, depending on its numerical or distinct or categoric groups of data. In terms of causes of variation, two major causes, it will be the environment and genetics. Most of the time, a lot of variation will be caused by a mixture of the two. But within genetics, we can have further causes, which are things like alleles, mutations, meiosis, and random fertilization and sexual reproduction as well. So when it comes to answering exam questions, keep in mind, sometimes they may ask you about the type of variation and you might be asked to present data on line uh, graphs or bar charts. Or when it comes to causes of variation, look at the question carefully, see specifically what variation they're actually focusing on, then consider what might be the causes for that particular variation.